Welcome everybody to the Fostering Success Michigan webinar series. Thank you so much for joining our webinar series, Getting to Know the FSM Higher Education Consortium. My name is Maddie Day and I am the Director of Outreach and Training with the Center for Fostering Success at Western Michigan University. And in my role, I directly oversee the Fostering Success Michigan statewide initiative. Just a couple housekeeping items. Remember, all attendees are, listen, are in listen-only mode. If you have any technical difficulties, you can contact the Citrix team at the number that you see on your screen. And of course, as always, the recording will be available on our Fostering Success Michigan website. A special thank you to our funders, the Kresge Foundation, the Havermill Foundation, and Western Michigan University for their generous support of the Fostering Success Michigan statewide initiative. Fostering Success Michigan helps to support the FSM Higher Education Consortium. This is a group of 17 campus-based support programs. Each of the campus support programs, and you see their lovely logos here, includes a designated campus coach providing 24-7 life skills coaching, mentorship opportunities, peer com community building opportunities, and connection to campus champions or advocates. All programs also include advocacy for students on campus and in the community to help ensure that their needs are being met, and many campuses provide direct pre-college outreach and recruitment. You'll see we have an asterisk by financial resources. Most of our programs have some element of financial resources that they are able to provide for students that are engaged in their program. However, these program resources, financial resources, um, vary across campuses and across programs. So we always encourage folks to be sure to look further into the financial resources that may be available at the particular campuses and programs that they're interested in. So with that, I would like to say a very special welcome to the FAST program from Saginaw Valley State and State University and Delta College. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having us, Maddie. Wonderful. And I know on the line today we have Heather, who is the campus coach, and we have uh, Ted from admissions at SVSU and Brad from admissions at Delta. So it'll be wonderful hearing from all of you. Um, thank you so much for taking some time out to share a little bit about your program with all of us and really help our students and supportive adults learn more about what your program has to offer. And just so that you know, we do have uh, contact information. We'll display this contact, contact information again, um, but we understand that there may be specific questions, particularly around admissions or financial aid um, or just general resource questions that folks have. And so uh, we have contact information for our presenters here and again at the end of our broadcast. So today we get to talk about the FAST program, Fostering an Academic Successful Transition. Um, and before we jump in, one of the things that I want to say um, is that the FAST program is a really unique program in that it is a cooperative program at SVSU and Delta College serving both. And one of the unique things, the things that I like to talk about with the FAST program um, is how this partnership really does help to create a supportive pipeline for students. Um, and I have just seen an amazing amount of growth in the program over these years and with the students that have been able to participate. And I think the partnership between Delta College and SVSU is one that um, really stands apart as just such a um, fantastic way to ensure that students don't lose support that they may have started with um, that help them get on a successful track as they're moving to and through their post-secondary education goals. So with that, I would love to hear a little bit about the FAST program eligibility requirements. So I will turn it over to Heather and your team um, to share a little bit more about that. Thanks, Maddie. So as far as eligibility goes, um, our participants are either SDSU or Delta College students under the age of 21 and who have experienced foster care on or after their 14th birthday, so basically students who are YIT eligible. Awesome. And um, one of the things that, you know, we always like to ask program programs and just hear a little bit more about is what other supports might be available to students beyond their 21st birthday? 
So beyond their 21st birthday, a lot of our students have chosen to be a peer mentor to our younger students. Um, so they also offer that kind of support to students who are experiencing similar situations to what they have experienced. Um, we also encourage our um, students over 21 to still attend our workshops and be involved in that way, um, to be involved in our outreach, to reach um, younger students. And then we also direct them towards different uh, resources within the campus and on, in, or within the community and on campus, including our uh, student counseling centers, our um, like financial aid kind of resources. Yeah, our financial and aid, our career resource centers, stuff like that. That's wonderful. You know, I think, um, again, as people are learning about the different programs through these this webinar series, it's really helpful to understand the full array of supports that are available, both through um, the program, but also through the post-secondary institutions themselves. And I know um, FAST is unique in that you have this peer mentoring aspect. And from my perspective, it's been really fun to see students that have transitioned in to college either through SVSU or Delta um, and, and really establish themselves, kind of get on that path of success and then move into that um, sort of more peer mentorship role, kind of a more senior role where they can share their experiences with other students and also um, expand their engagement on campus to a variety of different ways. And so it's wonderful to hear that you um, encourage your older students to also stay involved through things like the life skills classes um, and accessing the um, different champion network that you have across, across your campuses. So thank you for sharing that. So we would love to hear, there's always really interesting things um, going on at the programs, and we'd love to hear some, some program highlights from the FAST program. So we do a lot of fun things. We try to keep everything interactive and keep our students engaged. Um, we've done tailgating for SVSU football games, and so that gives um, both SVSU and Delta students a, a place to mingle, meet new people, kind of socialize in that aspect. Um, enjoy the football game, you know, some hot dogs and games. <laughs> um, we also do stress-free zones during exam time. I know things get crazy during exams, and um, our stress-free zones are a place for students to come and relax, have a snack, um, again, kind of socialize and uh, get some tips about, um, you know, preparation for testing, test anxiety, and um, just relaxation tips. Uh, we also had our happy on birthday party, which is something that we did new this year. Uh, it was a huge birthday bash to celebrate everybody's birthday on a day that was nobody's birthday. Um, I love that. Yeah, it was really a lot of fun. We had a custom made cake with a fast logo, um, ice cream, gifts, games, really the whole works. Um, and it was just a really fun way to celebrate everybody at once. Um, we've also done... Um, an outing to the pumpkin farm. So we kind of got to experience some of Michigan's beautiful fall weather and scenery while also holding um, a healthy communications workshop. So we try to incorporate not only some sort of outing and social socialization, but some sort of life skills workshop in everything we do. Um, we've had a Thanksgiving dinner, which was a great hit. Um, I ended up cooking a dinner with my husband and um, we got a lot of donations from the community, different restaurants, and we had just this beautiful feast for everybody to come and enjoy. Um, and then actually um, coming up here this summer, we have our overnight life skills camp retreat. Uh, so we'll be at a camp on Lake Huron, and we have four different workshops set up. Um, and it'll just be really a time for everyone to get away from the day-to-day -day life and really focus on some of these life skills workshops and building new skills. Awesome. You know, uh, just to kind of touch on some of the highlights that you had, I love that um, your program really allows for opportunities for students from both SVSU and Delta to get together, to build that peer relationship, to build that collaborative relationship. I would imagine that um, it really also allows for students who are at Delta who may be thinking about transferring to SVSU um, to have a better idea or maybe feel better prepared um, about, you know, the, that decision 
decision to transfer and moving, you know, maybe to a school that feels a little bit bigger um, and maybe take some of that, that overwhelming feeling out of it. Um, the, the mixing of things like the happy unbirthday uh, party, I think are great ways, um, you know, and really important ways to acknowledge that students have um, both life skills needs, but they also have nurturing needs. And so our campus-based support programs really do seek to meet those needs on a variety of different levels. The last thing I just wanted to highlight is how um, throughout all the, the things that you said, um, you are really integrating those life skills um, into the activities and I think that's a really important thing for folks to understand is that learning those life skills happens in real time, that um, understanding the work of supporting students with experience in foster care in post-secondary education um, is is, is complex work that doesn't just sort of happen in you know maybe a sterile office but happens while you're out in the community and you're doing activities together and so I think it's really cool the way that you have set up those activities um, and the camp retreat just sounds like a fantastic experience for students to really kind of take a step away probably get ready and kind of reset for the new school year so thank you for sharing those highlights so you have kind of double duty here, you know, normally we're asking programs to just speak about one institution, but you get to speak to two institutions. So can you share with us a little bit about what um, is special, what are some of the things that folks should know about SVSU and Delta College? So Mandy, I brought um, Ted Lind and Brad Merrill, both admissions reps from uh, both campuses, to kind of really highlight those special things about both schools. Wonderful. So um, this is Ted. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions from Saginaw Valley. So I just wanted to um, kind of share some of our high points for students that might be um, you know, part of this program. Um, I, I want to reiterate the, the partnership aspect that you mentioned already because I think um, you know, that is one of the benefits, I think, to having the relationship that we do and the campuses um, being in such close proximity. Um, SVSU also does staff an admissions person that works on Delta's campus three days a week. So there is um, a low stress environment for students to learn about the campus and um, make that transition from one to the next based upon whatever their um, career educational goals might be. Um, as far as SVSU goes, um, some of our high points, um, we're a campus of uh, just under 10,000 students which um, it makes us large enough that students are able to have a lot of the experiences and activities that they expect to have, I think, when, when you imagine what a college is like. Um, but we're still small enough that people definitely have personal attention throughout campus, not just in the FAST program. So, um, you know, instructors will know your name and they will know if you're there or not, and that's a good thing. And um, it's, it's the type of place where, um, you, you know, when you stop into an office to get help, they'll remember you and, and, you know, ask you how you're doing the next time someone sees you in the hallway. Um, for academic majors, there's over 90 different programs that somebody could choose from. Um, so there's a lot of variety, and that's, that's common with most of the public institutions, but um, some of the high points for SVSU would be um, our healthcare programs, specifically um, nursing and social work are two of the largest healthcare programs um, that we have at SVSU, and they are two of the larger nursing and social work, at least bachelor social work programs in the state of Michigan. And then um, new for this fall, we also have an MSW program too, so students interested in social work are able to progress through from bachelors through MSW. Um, business is very popular, and um, from some of the relationships in the community and, um, and partnerships, business students have a unique experience to uh, get some real-world experience as a student, which sets them up nicely for future careers. Um, education is another very popular program at SVSU. It's kind of the cornerstone on why SVSU ever started in the first place, um, really to teach teachers of the region. So um, that's still kind of at the core of what we do. Um, one thing I think that's worth highlighting is uh, SVSU does not use any teaching assistance or, or graduate assistance to teach any courses. So that means that when students are in the classroom, they're in front of um, subject matter experts the whole time, which is a good thing. Um, they're not learning from people that are um, training to get their master's degrees. They're learning from people that hold um, 
usually terminal degrees in their field, whatever that happens to be. Um, in, a, in a survey uh, that was done on, um, you know, what employers value um, when they're hiring students, one of the most important things was relevant experience. So that, you know, knowing that information, that is one of the keys that we really try to weave into um, all of our majors um, in making sure that students have relevant experience uh, before their senior year. So that when they're starting to build those resumes and so on, they, they have relevant things that they can put on that resume to help employers uh, seek them out for employment. Um, I think that covers, I guess, most of the high points that I would want to share. Um, as far as uh, a couple other quick things, though, um, as far as housing, um, SVSU, you know, does have some of the higher rated um, on-campus housing in the state, and it actually, um, Delta students also do have the opportunity to live on campus at SVSU, so that's another, another way that that partnership has continued. And then lastly, as far as tuition costs, um, SVSU does have the lowest tuition cost of any of the uh, four-year public universities in the state. So um, when you look at things from a, a value proposition, it, it, it means that there is, there is good value in what's provided and students are able to allow their financial resources to maybe go a little bit further than they can at other schools. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I, you know, I think a lot of that information will probably be new to uh, our students and supportive adults and professionals who are listening, but super valuable in just understanding what um, is available at SVSU, um, why a student might want to go, and just understanding, again, the, the really tremendous value that they will get out of attending SVSU. I think highlighting um, the that all of the classes are taught by content experts um, with uh, terminal degrees in their field, that's a huge difference than, um, you know, many other four-year university experiences. Um, and then the lowest tuition combined with some of the highest rated housing, um, that's also a, just a great benefit. And also to know that Delta College students are able to access that housing as well, that's, you know, just a very big challenge that we see for many of our um, you know, community college students not having access to housing and that creating additional barriers. So thank you so much for sharing that. And um, Brad, I would love to hear just, you know, some more about some of the unique aspects of Delta College. Hi, this is Brad from Delta. Um, well, just like Ted said, Delta is a small kind of hometown atmosphere. We also have just under 10,000 students. So again, the professors are gonna know your name. You're not a number. You get a lot of personal attention. Um, because the class sizes are class sizes are small, it's a really nice transition from high school to college. We also have the teaching and learning center where if they're struggling in a class, they can get free tutoring. Um, our tuition cost is also low. Our industry tuition right now is 107 cost per credit hour. Our out district is 23 per credit hour. Um, there's basically two types of students who come to Delta. There's the student who wants to go into a career path and earn a, certif a certificate or an associate's degree. Um, some of our popular programs on that path would be in health, like our nursing program is very popular, radiography, sonography, um, dental hygiene, TTA, um, also our tech and trades area, programs like welding, construction, um, CNC. Um, we have three different auto technology programs. Our newest program is actually the heavy duty diesel program. So if a student is thinking they, they don't want to attend school for four or five years after high school, they can certainly come to Delta, earn a certificate or an associate's degree and make a really, really good living after they graduate. The other type of student that comes to Delta is gonna enter one of our transfer programs. And that's what I did. Um, I, I was an associate of arts major did my gen ed credits, kind of figured out what I wanted to do, and then I transferred on and got my bachelor's degree from Michigan State. Um, so no matter what you want to do, what path you want to go down, Delta is a really great place to start. And then you can transfer on if you'd like to, or you know, earn your degree in a career field and make a really good living, um, all at an affordable price. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you probably shouldn't leave Delta without with, with any debt due to the fact that you have so many scholarships available to you. You know, if you're in you know the fostering program, there's a lot of money available to you. 
many of the students are HIP eligible, the tuition incentive program, that's going to cover all of your tuition and fees at Delta. So if you have TIP, especially uh, community college is a great place to start. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Brad. And, um, you know, it's always really helpful to hear the wide array of programs available at community colleges. Um, and thank you for highlighting both, you know, some of the certificate programs, but also um, some of the programs that will allow students to transfer and, you know, really underscoring that there are um, multiple paths. And so students really can figure out what path is best for them. Um, well, of course, uh, they are receiving support through the FAST program. Um, um, and, you know, I think, again, just that you touched on um, the low debt um, piece and also um, the the low number of students, so it feels like it's, um, you know, a more intimate community. I think both of those things are really appealing to students who maybe are unsure about uh, wanting to take the risk on uh, post-secondary education, but um, knowing that they can start with a smaller school and that there's a, you know, a lot of resources, financial resources to support them while they're there may make that, um, that transition a little bit more appealing and definitely kind of set them up for greater success. With that, um, our next topic is really to talk about tuition fees and cost of attendance. Um, and of course, this is going to vary differently from SVSU to Delta. Um, but I'm wondering if you can speak to some of the numbers that we have here on the screen as far as um, how they compare. I know, Ted, you, you spoke to this a little bit as far as the, the low tuition um, of SVSU compared to other uh, four-year universities across the state. Um, but I think it's it's helpful for, for folks to understand what kind of in general they can anticipate as far as um, their, you know, sort of financial commitment. And then also, um, you know, how much might be available in student aid or if there's any specific scholarships that are unique to um, students with experience in foster care at SVSU or Delta. So I'll turn it back to um, all of you and help us understand the, the differences in tuition and fees at both of these institutions. So um, the tuition and fees total that we generally provide is the one that you, that you have there on your screen. Um, that's based on a 28 credit per schedule per year. So one important thing to note, the federal government defines full-time enrollment as 12 or more credits. So to get, you know, various types of aid, many students need to be full-time. We base our tuition off 14 credits because that's a more realistic plan that many students follow, and um, that puts someone closer to, you know, on that four-year graduation pathway. If someone only takes mm -hmm. 12 credits per term, their likelihood of graduating four years is, is pretty low. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that, that's one thing to note, and, and comparing costs from, from one college to the next, it can be deceiving, so it's important for people to understand, you know, what the numbers mean, and um, I absolutely encourage someone to speak with the admissions staff at whatever school they might be considering to really break down the tuition numbers a little bit more so they understand what that includes. Um, the main line items that you'd have on your bill from SCSU would be your tuition and fee costs, which is roughly $8,800 for... Um, for a 28 credit per year schedule, and then you'd have your room and board expense, which is um, almost $9,200 for the year. Um, the room and board cost for an SVSU student or a Delta student would be the same, so it's, it's that that is, is equal if they were living on campus here. Um, and then books and supplies, with um, we, we give people an estimate on what they should plan on for books and supplies, but ultimately that is um, the individual's choice on, on what they decide to do for books. So there's there's many options out there for what someone might do to, to fund their books. As far as scholarships, SVSU has um, various levels of what we would call a merit scholarship. And a good way to think of that is a reward for doing well in high school. It's based on a person's test score, ACT or SAT, and then their high school graduation GPA. And that is essentially a tuition discount for um, doing well on those things. And the minimum GPA to have an academic scholarship or a merit scholarship at SVSU is a 3.0. And, um, and then all the way up from there, the, the merit scholarship would start at $2,000 discount, and it would go all the way to a full tuition award, depending on how well someone had done. Um, SVSU also provides need-based aid to students um, called Saginaw Valley Opportunity Grants. And this grant um, basically goes to the same type of person that is eligible for Pell Grants, 
except this is an SVSU internal award um, of need-based aid. So someone can qualify for up to $4,000 of need-based aid from SVSU, and the specific amount that they qualify depends on what their financial need is towards school, and then also what sort of academic awards they're already receiving. Um, SVSU is also a step two school for TIP, so once they've um, you know, been through phase one, um, we're a, a phase two or a step two school for TIP, so that, that still is an option to use some of those dollars at SVSU later. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, and, you know, I think pointing out, well, one, that just the number of scholarships and, and institutional aid that is available is wonderful for, for folks to know. I know sometimes seeing those numbers can feel overwhelming, but then hearing about the kind of support that's available um, is just sort of breaks all of that down. And the reminder that SVSU is a TIP Phase two school, and so I would imagine that um, students that start at Delta College transition to SVSU are probably able to maximize that TIP benefit, so that's a great reminder. Um, and so, Brad, with Delta College, um, can you help us understand um, these tuition fees and, and cost of attendance? So, since our tuition is really low, um, if a student has TIP, obviously that's going to cover the tuition and fees. Uh, if they have TIP, most likely they're going to have a Pell Grant as well. Um, at the end of the day, because our tuition is so low, they'll actually get a refund um, back after tuition fees are paid and they get their books. So a lot of our students actually end up getting paid to go to Delta if they, if they have TIP. Um, if they don't have TIP, if, if they just have the Pell Grant, that too would, would take care of tuition fees and books. That they're not going to pay anything out of pocket. Um, if you're that student who maybe isn't TIP eligible or Pell eligible, like I was, um, since the cost is low, um, we have a ton of scholarships available through the Delta Foundation. Um, those scholarships come online in, I believe it's October, and the deadline is usually in February. Um, there's so many scholarships that some of them don't even get awarded because people don't apply. So when I'm out recruiting, I always tell students, apply to all the scholarships you possibly can. There's so many of them, people don't apply and you know they, that free money sits there. So mm -hmm. even if you don't have TIP or Pell, there's so many scholarships out there and because the cost is low, you, sh you really should leave Delta without any debt. We also have just a ton of student worker positions available. We're always looking for great student workers and if a student wants to work on campus, we work around their schedule. They just have to come to Career Services and fill out the application. And literally every office at Delta hires student workers. And again, they don't necessarily need to have experience. They work around their schedule. It looks great on their resume. And that, again, helps them leave Delta without any debt. Wonderful. Thank you so much for highlighting some of those things. Um, so you mentioned the Delta Foundation. Is that, and that that's where um, these the scholarships uh, that would be available for students looking to attend or attending Delta College would be available, Start, you said starting in October and then through February. Is that something that, that folks can find on the Delta College website? Yep, it's on the website. If they just go to, to delta.edu and scroll down to A to, A to Z index and click on ask for scholarships, find scholarships, They'll find the foundation, they'll find the deadlines. I said October, that, that may not be correct. It may actually be November, December, and, but I do know the deadlines are in February. Um, okay. All the scholarships originate in the foundation. There's the Delta Presidential Scholarship, which is a, a, is a full ride, essentially, and there's so many other scholarships that are based on major, you know, nursing scholarships, criminal justice scholarships. And then a lot of scholarships that don't really have any restrictions at all. They just are, you know, legacy um, scholarships that anybody can apply to. And, and like I said, some of them don't always get awarded because people don't apply. So a student needs to really apply to every scholarship they can possibly qualify for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it just such a great reminder that there are so many financial resources out there. And so if students are looking at, you know, going to Delta College, looking at going to SVSU, to not be deterred by um, the finances, to really 
do some digging, look through the websites, um, and look through to find those scholarships that are available and, and apply for those. Um, and I would imagine that you all have great connections with financial aid officers who can help explain financial aid packaging to students and all of those really essential pieces that we know that can be, you know, somewhat confusing. And again, um, for those folks who are listening who may have some additional questions, we will have contact information for Ted and Brad. Um, um, and Heather at the end of this broadcast. Um, the last thing that I just want to underscore, and I think this is a great a great reminder to all of us, is that um, on many campuses, but it sounds especially like Delta College really promotes this, um, the uh, opportunities to work on campus are available for students and that this is such a great way not only to have some financial benefit but also to learn some of those uh, just career and employment skills um, to build your network of professionals across campus so thank you so much for bringing that up um, Brad and hopefully students will look into that so our last question for you all are um, to hear from you about three things that we should know about the FAST program and SCSU and Delta College. Um, in other webinar series, we would call this our humble brag, asking our guests to join us and um, share some great things that are happening uh, in their community, in their program, what have you. And so we wanted to give you all the opportunity to do your own humble brag and share some things that we should know about the FAST program. So I'll turn it back over to you. Thanks, Maddie. So I know we did go over a lot of the things, so this kind of might be a little bit of a repeat, but the first thing that I really like to emphasize about the FAST program is that um, it is on both Delta and SBSU's campuses and just that support that comes from both schools um, and the opportunity for the collaboration, the transfers, um, and the many opportunities just to, um, you know, work with different people on different campuses, different programs, uh, really that partnership is really key for our program. Um, the second thing that I like to highlight and that I really like about our program is our peer mentor program. I think it's so important for students coming in um, to college to have that peer support, you know, someone who's already experienced what they're experiencing, kind of facing the same stress and struggles that, you know, are typical of college. Um, someone who can just be there, you know, if a student wants to try something new, but, you know, doesn't maybe have that social support yet or um, anybody to try it out with, a peer mentor is a great person to, you know, try those new things with, um, you know, join a club with them. Um, you know, walk around campus, get familiar with the area, kind of navigate different things. Uh, peer mentors are also great. They can help newer, younger students kind of learn, you know, what might be a, a good teacher to take for a certain class or, um, you know, where an office is on campus, that kind of thing. Uh, and then the third thing that I really love about our program and about both schools is the, the low cost for tuition. I think that's so important for uh, our students and specifically our population of students um, you know, that low cost tuition makes college really affordable and both schools offer quality education programs and opportunities. Um, so it really helps make college very accessible, which I think is, you know, a key part to getting in and succeeding in school. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Heather. I think, you know, all of those pieces that you highlighted are so essential and I hope for our students and um, professionals and supportive adults who are listening to this, you know, as you're navigating the different college options, um, you really seriously consider SVSU or Delta and the FAST program as a place where, you know, students will be well supported um, to not only just achieve their education goals, but really thrive um, in their you know personal goals as well um, the I, I can't say enough about the peer mentoring um, program that you all have and the ways that you're able to extend uh, both support to older students but also to really um, keep that continuum of peer community so that students can learn from each other um, they see that you know this success is possible it may feel like it's taking forever to get to where they want to go but they're seeing other students graduate seeing their success and knowing that they're um, on the same track to get there themselves 
themselves. And the the low cost that you mentioned for tuition and really the opportunity to transition from Delta to SVSU um, and really keep those costs quite low is so essential. And I think you know many schools that um, are part of the FSM Higher Education Consortium really believe in supporting our students to graduate with no or low debt and the affordability of both SVSU and Delta College really allows that to happen. So thank you so much for highlighting those. Um, they're really just great benefits that you all have and the work that you all are doing to support our students with experience in foster care um, at your institutions is exceptional. So I just want to thank you so much for joining us. Again, you see contact information for Heather, for Ted, and for Brad. Um, please reach out to these folks. They want to hear from you. They want to be helpful um, in any way that they can. And, you know, I'll just say thank you guys for sharing the great information that you had for us today. And for our listeners, just remember that FSM has a lot of resources available for you, namely our Higher Education Resources for Students from Foster Care Guide. You can find that guide along with many of our other guides on the FSM website, fosteringsuccessmichigan.com. We are also uh, very active on social media, so you can find FSM on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and you can find our Fostering Success Michigan Higher Education Consortium. So that's all of the programs that have campus-based, all of the schools that have campus-based support programs on Facebook. It's a fun way to kind of catch up and see what is going on with those programs and kind of see what it looks like to be a part of those programs. So one last big thank you to the FAST program, um, to Heather, to Ted, and to Brad for sharing today all the wonderful resources that you have available. And we hope that everybody out there considers SVSU and Delta and the FAST program as a great option when they're doing their college search. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Maddie.